This is IR Conversations, the Palinet Podcast. This is John Iliff at Palinet's headquarters in Philadelphia, and we continue our podcast, IR Conversations, this time with a series of three interviews with individuals from West Virginia University. We've done a lot of projects there, and we've broken the, these interviews up, as I mentioned, into three segments. Uh, each one approximately 10 minutes long, so we hope you'll find them useful. We'll appreciate your comments. These were recorded over the telephone, so they're a little tinny. apologize for that, but we do think that the information is useful. Thanks a lot. Talking to people a few states away in the great state of West Virginia, and more specifically from West Virginia University. These folks have had a great amount of experience in, in using IR-related software and in managing IR-related activities. And the first of the folks at WVU I want to talk to is John Hagen. Hi, John. Hi, John. Now, John, I, uh, I keep getting your job title mixed up. Can you tell us what that is? Certainly. Um, I'm the manager of our electronic institutional document re- repository program here at uh, West Virginia University. And so basically we have three main collections that are encompassed in our IR. There would be the electronic theses and dissertations, the electronic honors theses is for our undergraduate students, and our electronic scholarly resources archive. You know, and that's intended for our faculty and administrators. And to encompass what we're going to be talking about, we have a variety of uh, rather independent uh, digital library projects, and that's why we have the three of us assembled here. And so my main area, is, as we mentioned, is the institution repository. There at WVU, and from, from your perspective on things, um, what are you doing in, in terms of developing a, an IR? What, what are some of the software and hardware that you're using, um, and what, what approach are you taking in that regard? Sure. Well, we started out small um, back in 1998, actually. WVU was the um, second institution in the world to require electronic submission of our thesis and dissertations from our graduate students. We were right behind the Virginia Tech. And that was the basis for collecting our, our um, intellectual property. And um, at the time, we had talked about a provision eventually to include undergraduate students. And hence, in the past year, we revamped our systems and uh, kind of created a parallel um, system uh, uh, for the um, jumping from ETD to EHD, the honors thesis. And then we had also done some pilots uh, with our Electronic Scholarly Resources Archive. And so for the uh, annual ETD symposium uh, that um, we uh, are associated with, uh, the Network Digital Library of Thesis and Dissertations Consortium, um, we collected the proceedings from the early years uh, from this conference series. So when we migrated things into our new system, that became the basis of our initial holdings and in the future we'll be soliciting submissions from our faculty and administrators. In terms of the software that was used, we started out very small, very low budget. The um, former director of the academic computing unit on campus had an old server lying around in in his office and uh, had some knowledge in uh, Microsoft Access and uh, the Cold Fusion uh, software. And so basically he created a very rudimentary system, but it allowed us to have uh, online submissions, a simple review process, and a means of uh, posting them on the internet uh, along with appropriate metadata. Within uh, about three years, we began to outgrow the system, and with the shift in priorities and staffing, um, our major uh, division, of the Office of Information Technology, um, took over. So we uh, went to another in-house operation, and uh, because the expertise on campus is with the Oracle um, system. We've used that uh, for quite a few years now for our uh, financials and human resources uh, information. And it was kind of a natural to build a, a digital library application on top of that. Um, so, and it's so completely homegrown, really? Uh, absolutely, yeah. Oh, wow. And now, it, it, maybe as a matter of explanation, at the time when we began our program, DSpace was just in its infancy, and Virginia Tech, the Virginia Tech ETD system had just been released. And uh, we didn't have the expertise on campus at that point to utilize either of those systems. And uh, so we, we opted to go you know, the simple route and then you know, naturally segue into the Oracle system, which interestingly is uh, the, the Oracle uh, platform is used by many of the commercial service providers that uh, now do the, uh, the commercially based uh, institution repository service. Obviously you had some buy-in. Uh, how did you continue to get the activity in it? Was there a provost somewhere that, that, that threw their weight behind it, or how, how, did, how did that happen? Yeah, absolutely, and I think that was a critical part of our very uh, 
discrete implementation and planning period. It took about a year from 97 to 98 to kind of think about things, do some politics on campus. And our um, university provost, Jerry Lang, um, was instrumental in this process. He became kind of his pet project. We did a variety of presentations to faculty uh, and other governance groups on campus. And quite frankly, I think at the time it was such a new thing that it may have gone over some people's heads. There was not any real resistance at all um, mm -hmm. as we began to implement the, the program. And um, generally people liked it all, all the way through. But we we kind of avoid a lot of the politics that go on in many other institutions where a lot of times we'll drag on a pilot for, you know, indefinitely, you know, even up to upwards of a, a decade or so. Mm -hmm. uh, Jerry Lang felt that, you know, we said we're going to do it. This will help us give a tremendous visibility to our research uh, and to our departments in the university. So, you know, he put his foot down and uh, it became a reality within literally one year. I know that, that you folks are doing uh, just so many different things in terms of digital collections at, at, at WVU. What direction do you see things going on there um, in terms of, of overall projects? Do you, do you see a, a more fully integrated IR as a, as a potential development? Yeah, actually there has been some talk at uh, the library, the, the, um, at the level of the library dean, uh, Frances O'Brien, and certainly she's been in uh, touch with the um, university provost. Right now we're looking at uh, some commercial packages. So I think in order to make it worthwhile to invest in, for example, we've been looking very carefully at the um, Ex Libris um, system, mm -hmm. uh, digital Digitals, system, right. Yeah, in particular. Um, and uh, also possibly revamp of the library catalog system, et cetera. And um, so the general consensus was that it um, may end up going with Ex Libris. So I think the next step would be to secure some funding, get some campus visits of these folks, the vendors on campus, and mm -hmm. um, see where we can go with this. Um, but I think in terms of an, uh, in, in investments, if we were to do that, it would have to be an enterprise-wide solution um, that would cover all things. And one of the beauties of this would be we could continue the interesting aspects we could do is um, if we were to go into a commercial um, solution, we could take our various digital collections, have independent managers uh, continue to run um, things as, they, as we always have done in a somewhat independent fashion, but have them all integrated under one interface. That, that's basically what the, the, the plan may be. Okay. Well, we'll, we're, we'll look with, with interest. Um, now, you, you, you folks in many respects are the, the granddaddy of, uh, of these digital collections, particularly when it comes to um, thesis and dissertation collections. So, John, um, there are a lot of folks out there that are, that are just starting. Um, looking back, and if you had to do it all over again, or, or if, if you were in their position, um, wh what bit of advice can, can you give them? Say, so, you know, you certainly don't be afraid to jump in. You can start small and uh, build up to, to larger collections, you know, as, as time and resources permit. And talk to other uh, schools in the region. You know, certainly we've uh, assisted uh, schools not only in the region, but um, people in various uh, parts of the developing world. Uh, for example, this fall we had a visitor from India come in and uh, look at our HD program. Um, and so certainly, you know, we would be happy to assist other schools, you know, with this kind of thing as well. Well, kudos to, to, to you and, and WVU and the library there. And, and as a, of course, as a librarian, uh, it does my heart good to, to see here that you guys are so proactive and involved so early on. So thank you, John. Thank you, John.